Welcome back to the wood shop. My name's Brett. In my last video, I mentioned that I got my first paid commission job and part of that job is replacing their fireplace mantle. And what the customers decided on was a reclaimed wood box beam mantle to replace uh, the more modern kind of mantle that they had. So I'm finally getting to the point where I'm ready to build that. I went out and procured some actual barn wood. The guy who gave it to me said that it wasn't on a barn, but it was in a barn. And it's solid red oak. It's full of worm holes and nail holes. And there are nails in some of this. And so I want to go through and clean them up and get all that metal out of the wood before I pass it through any of my saws. So I've got a bunch of tools here. For that purpose, a couple big screwdrivers, a uh, can opener, that might come in handy for smaller points, I'm not sure, pry bar, a cat's paw, a vice grip, a uh, nail set, channel locks, and a nippers. Hopefully that's going to be what I need. First step though is to find all that metal. So I've got a metal detector. I'm gonna go through every square inch. These, these boards are about 10 feet long and between six and eight inches wide and maybe about an inch thick. So let's get to work. sensitive it's reading my saw table underneath all the wood so I've relocated to the garage I'm set up on saw horses it's a beautiful day in mid-may here in Wisconsin the Sun is shining the birds are singing the grass is green and uh, it's actually kind of nice to feel some airflow on my legs <laughs> uh, so we're gonna see how this works with without a table saw underneath Something I know is metal, oh, that's metal. Well, that wasn't too bad. I only found one nail. I was actually expecting to find more. There's plenty of nail holes, but only one rusty nail came out. So I'm feeling pretty good about passing these through saws. Uh, I want to take one more step before I do that though, and that's uh, clean them up with a soft nylon brush.
Unfortunately, six feet is just a little too long to fit through the planer before it hits the wall. So I'm gonna have to unbolt the planer from where it lives and move it over so I can fit the boards through. Now in order to get good miter joints, we need to have a uniform thickness and square edges. And this is the, the piece that's going on the bottom of the beam. That's actually not too bad. There's a little bit of a cupping there. Um, but for as old as this wood is, been sitting on a pile outside, uh, it's actually in pretty decent shape. This one that'll be on the front of the mantle, so like this, um, actually like this, this will be the front face. This one's got a bit of a cupping, so this is the, the inside of the beam. So I'm gonna have to level that off on the planer. And then this one will be the top, and that one's got a twist and a bow so we're gonna have to do quite a bit of planing to that. I'm trying to keep as much character on the face as I can, uh, but I may need to do some skip planing to get the board to straighten out. So I'm using this melamine shelf as a planer sled. I'm gonna shim up the boards and hot glue them into place so that they won't teeter and tip and try to get both sides a uh, uniform thickness all the way across and both faces parallel to each other. So this first one that had the more of a twist, my goal was to just kind of shave off the high points. This is the show face of the top of the beam. Um, so I just wanted to level off the high points so now I can flip it over and uh, plane the bottom so that it's flat. And then we'll see what kind of thickness we're dealing with for the other two pieces and then match those up. So I'm gonna pop this off of the shims and glue and flip it over and put it back on this sled but i don't think i'll need to shim it i'm just going to use the sled for support on this short planer bed
now after a bunch of planing, I've got a relatively flat bottom. So I'm using that same planer sled and I've attached some toggle bolts to it to keep the wood in place. And I'm using this as a joiner on the table saw. Uh, you saw me putting in a new rip blade for straight rip cuts. So I'm gonna use this to make one straight edge and 90 degrees to the surface. Then I will turn it around off the sled and run it through as I normally would up against the fence to establish two parallel 90 degree sides. Okay, now I've established at least one straight 90 degree edge on each of these three pieces. And now I'm going to cut miters. Um, I'm going to tilt the blade to 45 and a half degrees um, on both sides of the miter. And that will make a nice tight miter on the corner where it matters. And to make sure that I've got the right setup, I'm going to do some test cuts with the same thickness material. It's also red oak. And it's also from the project that I'm working on. This is from the dismantled mantle. That's the new mantle. I like saying that. Dismantled mantle. This miter rip on the top piece of the beam went pretty well. And it's right at six inches. And this other side is 90 degrees because that's part that meets up to the wall. This is the cut that's making me especially nervous because it's miters on both sides. So I just left the fence where it was for this cut and I'm gonna pass it through on one side, flip it around, pass it through on the other it should end up with the same top dimension as this one. Uh, it's not critical, but it's what I'm shooting for, is six inches by six inches. So, wish me luck.
should have practiced that cut because <laughs> I just hit the camera stand with the lumber. Yeah.